Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody. Thank you. Uh, so GitLab permissions as code. Um, how did we do this, Sean? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Northwestern Mutual thing. All right, so quick company plug, Northwestern Mutual. Um, we have an office here in uh, Manhattan on 11th and University. Um, this is our headquarters in Milwaukee, where we are both from, and Sean and Kyle, if you were there for their talk, um, and a bunch of other people. Anyway, so if you want to work on GitLab and writing code for people, other people who write code, come talk to us afterward. We'd be happy to have you on our team. Can't get off. There we go. So yeah, my name is Mike Nick. I'm passionate about lifting boulders in my yard. How do you go back? <laughs> there you go. There. And uh, so yeah, metaphorically at work as well, I like to, to remove the big boulders in the way. Um, the I'm Nicole Schultz. I've been at Northwestern Mutual for about three and a half years now. And I've worked with a lot of different application teams, helping them get onboarded to CI CD, and also teaching them about DevOps best practices. So today, Mike and I are going to talk to you about how we're using GitLab to um, actually control permissions to repositories and groups um, with the GitLab API. So Mike is actually the one who came up with the original idea for this. So he's going to give you a little bit of a backstory on how he came up with this idea. So yeah, uh, over four years ago, we got a, an opportunity to do greenfield work at Northwestern Mutual, like all new, new tooling, like we brought in Kubernetes, we brought in GitLab. And um, we had a lot of forward-thinking engineers but we had an issue where, uh, does anybody ever have any issues with Active Directory or AD groups or anything like that? <laughs> like, so we, we do this thing where we have multiple AD groups per tool and that was not a, a great scaling model for GitLab. Also, GitLab doesn't have like a Teams feature and we were having these gigantic groups where we only wanted a small number of people to have like maintainer or owner you know, to like four repos and not all 1,000. Um, so I came up with this concept to just use the GitLab API with some Python scripts and use YAML, YAML files as input. Um, oh, we gotta hit that. So GitLab API to the rescue, that's our, my, my Tanuki there that sprinkled in throughout. So let's talk about some of the benefits of when you have permissions as code. So one of the main ones is that everything is stored in SCM, so you have a really easy history, an easy way to see the history and look at who had uh, permissions to what repositories or groups at what time. So this gives a really easy audit for us. Um, you know, with Active Directory groups, you can still do that. You can see what AD groups have access to what repositories at what time, but you have to go a step farther than see, okay, now who was in that AD group at that time so you can figure out what access they had. So with everything written in YAML files, it's really easy to go through history and see, okay, you know, this commit changed this land user ID to have this access on this group or project. Um, it makes it really easy to see. Um, another thing is that we originally, when we came up with this, our team as GitLab admins was actually approving all the changes to all the YAML files and all the merge requests. Um, we've been able to utilize the code owners feature now to actually delegate that out to the application teams themselves. So um, the code owners and the YAML file are the app teams, and then they can actually approve the merge requests um, to who has access to you know, their, their repositories and groups. And like Mike said, we're still hooked up with LDAP. We're just not using AD groups. So we still get the benefit of when someone leaves the company, you know, um, their account is deactivated in um, LDAP, and that flows through to GitLab as well. So how does it work? So hopefully you guys will see it's pretty simple, um, not very complicated, but we basically have a repository that we call GitLab Access, and this controls, um, allows access for app teams to create or update their groups, teams, and deploy keys. So it's pretty simple, an app, an app team goes into GitLab, goes to our repository, makes a branch, updates their YAML files, and submits an MR. So we have an example here of how this works for groups. So on the left-hand side, you'll see we have the cloned GitLab Access repository. And then within that, we have a folder um, named groups. Let me, let me skip that one. OK. <laughs> there we go. Um, so inside the group folder, um, we have a folder named CICD. And within that, we have a YAML file named CICD YAML. So the folder structure within the groups folder needs to exactly mimic the group and subgroup structure you would want to see in GitLab. So in this example, we're going to create a group named CICD. 
Um, the YAML file is pretty simple. It just has the user IDs and then the level of access they should have to the group. Um, on the bottom, you can see it also works with internal GitLab users if you have those defined in your instance. So what this does is, um, you know, a team can edit the YAML file when they do a um, check-in and merge request. Um, it's going to do some basic linting to make sure the YAML is formatted correctly, that kind of thing. And then it's just going to call the GitLab API in the back end. It's going to create the group if it doesn't exist and then add the user IDs with the correct access. On the left-hand side here, you can see we also have another folder, CICD infra, and if we expanded that, you'd see a CICD infra.yaml, and that would basically create a subgroup named CICD infra within the CICD group in GitLab. So as Mike said, we also had the need for this concept called teams, and a team is basically just a group in GitLab that has members but no projects. Um, so we kind of needed this, as Mike was saying, because a lot of teams um, or application teams wanted to give, you know, four repositories in their group um, access to people outside of their area. Um, so that's how we're using Teams today. So on the left-hand side in our repository, we have a Teams folder. The naming convention for this YAML file is that it has to start with team hyphen and then the name of the team. So here we're going to create a team called CICD. And then the YAML is pretty simple. It's, again, the user IDs and the access they should have to that team. And then at the bottom, the projects that they should have access to and the level of access they should have to those projects. And it's the same GitLab CI CD pipeline, right, on the back end. It's going to do some linting when it runs, and then it's going to create the team if it doesn't exist, update the users, and it's also actually going to create the projects if those don't exist, um, and update the permissions there as well. So the last example we have is deploy keys. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern by now, but again, our GitLab access repo, we have a folder named deploy keys. Um, and application teams can just go in and create the YAML file, which has to be the name of their deploy key. The YAML is just the deploy key ID and then list of projects or groups that it should have access to and be enabled on. And application teams at Northwestern Mutual are really using deploy keys to give Ansible Tower, um, which is one of our main CD tools, um, access to clone repositories from GitLab so it can pull playbooks um, and that kind of information. So Mike's going to walk through a flipbook demo to kind of see what this looks like. So yeah. Hopefully nobody has their socks on right now because they're about to be knocked off by <laughs> a slide deck demo of merging code. Um, so yeah, so it's as simple as a YAML list there. Um, hopefully this works because it's supposed to go quick. So yeah, I create my delete me group. I add the admin as the owner. I, we, we see that the linting job is running here. And we see that it's failed because the user, oh, actually, it's not a YAML list, right? So, all right, I got to go back and add a dash and make owner capitalize just for, for giggles. Commit it. See linting's run, running again. All right, cool. We got thumbs up. Now we see linting is running again, and we see a, a dry run is the grayed out box. It's not actually running in this picture. Um, and we see, oh, wait, admin's not a user in our system. So we go back and... Redo that all. Um, again, Northwestern Mutual, we had to heavily uh, redact our usernames and such. And that's, the, that's actually the reason we couldn't like, have a video or anything. That would have been a pain to try to, to remove our usernames. But anyway, we see that somebody down there is going to be added as owner, and it, it looks all good now. And after all that, we can see that like, these, these, these lintings run in like 19 seconds. The apply runs in about a minute. And it's all pretty quick, so it's it's not as it's 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 much more transparent and not as complicated as maybe a, an Active Directory group request. And we see that it did indeed create the delete me group. All right. So full disclosure, um, when I first did this, I was just screwing around on a weekend, and I had never done anything production-wise with Python. And then all of a sudden, it was in production. Um, so slowly, as more and more people started to come onto the system, we sort of became the SCM of the enterprise. Like I had mentioned, we were like a greenfield project, and we sort of became the tool for most people, at least. Time started to take an hour, because I hadn't thought about making this an enterprise tool. So thankfully, we had uh, more talented teammates than myself refactor this over the year, years, I guess, now. And so now that's why that takes so little time. I'm on top of adding so many people, you know, there's people that are grumpy. Why, why don't you just use AD groups? Like, why? Why, can't, why do you have to, like, create your own process for this? Um, we still feel like it's a better user experience for people who want empowerment over, you know, creating their merge request. You know, it's debatable, I agree, but 
just full disclosure there. And then I had mentioned the AD group sort of snowball. Like, so shout out to Stan Hugh and Drew Blessing early on for trying to help us configure our sync settings in the GitLab RV file, but it just wasn't working for us. Like people like team leads were losing access in the middle of demos. So that's a little bit more uh, backstory there. So next one. <laughs> uh, so I, I got this, you might have seen this in a political context, but uh, um, we have a really forward thinking company. There is still, you know, it's, an, it's a 160 year old company is the line we always say. So there's plenty of people that are gonna grumble. It's not like we're reverting any of this, but there's just that friction, I think, that I think a lot of companies of any size and history experience as you try to invent a new way to do, doing things. So we, we tried to get this open source, but there's, and, and, and legal and all that is all on board. They're really, they want us to do that, but there's still obviously a lot of work to go into to making that a reality. So I guess that is it, thank you. Any, any questions? questions? Yeah. Uh, do you guys ever have any problems with uh, people manually overriding permissions? Or do you have it so that it doesn't pull right inside? Yeah, it, 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 there, we, I think that we run that nightly. A full, yeah. But the, and the, the one uh, full disclosure I didn't share that I meant to share as well, we don't mess with like, people can still add people to a project because when you have like 20,000 plus projects, you don't want to cycle through that in the API. I don't know, I haven't looked at doing that in a while either. It might be possible now, but when I first started, the way I was doing it wouldn't have allowed for that. Any other questions? Great, thank you so cool, much. Thanks. Really appreciate it. <laughs>